Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the final session with Digital Schoolhouse. Um, my name is Michael. I'll be taking you through today's final Friday session, guys, on creating a social media campaign for all of that work that we've done on developing a computer game. Now, what I'd like to talk about before I move on into today's session is that so far uh, with me, uh, for the first two weeks, uh, we looked at all of those different skills of computational thinking, problem solving, algorithms, design, iterative development, all of those different things that are really, really key and crucial and looked for in the gaming industry. And if you wanted to become a games designer or games developer, uh, what we've looked at more so this week is how we can take that game and actually bring it to market and start making money on it. OK, um, so what does that actually mean for us? Well, what that means is that after these sessions, hopefully you would have got an introduction into some of those core skills with regards to uh, producing or developing a computer game. And from Monday's session, we're talking about coming up with some of the branding ideas of our game. Uh, on Wednesday's session, we were talking about how we could come up with some uh, environmentally friendly packaging in order to stand out from the crowd with our game. And then today, what we're going to talk about is utilizing social media in order to make sure that we can make the absolute maximum uh, influence for our game and hopefully make the maximum number of sales. OK, now, is this a real thing? Uh, do people actually use social media? <clears throat> to uh, to you know start selling uh, the things that they make. Well, what I'd like to just quickly bring your attention to, guys, before we continue, is um just a computer game that I've played before that I know about. Uh, this game's called Axiom Verge. Um, this game uh, was developed by one person. Um, his name was uh, Thomas Happ. And Thomas Happ spent five years on creating this computer game in his spare time, in his downtime. He made the graphics, he made the code, he made the music and the sounds. Uh, he made absolutely everything to do with this game. Um, and this game now sells on Steam, Nintendo Switch eShop, uh, Xbox and PlayStation shops. There's actually physical copies of this game that you can buy. You see that actually on the screen here, we can see that the main picture that I've brought up is a picture from Steam where it's got 4.4 stars out of five and where it's selling for $20 uh, per sale. So what has Tom Thomas Happ done for himself? Well, he's turned himself into a millionaire. Uh, he developed some of the skills that were required to come up with game design and game development. Uh, he then took his game to market uh, he actually did go through a publisher, but didn't necessarily need to. And I think actually now he'd probably regret that decision uh, because his publisher has not been very kind to him. But he came up with the branding. He came up with all of this work that's gone behind it. Now, what could he have done if he was to go it alone? He could have used social media uh, to have promoted his computer game, to have got the word out about his game and also any other messages that he wanted to send out as well. Now, Thomas Hap sadly is actually using social media now in order to spread word about how his publisher has taken advantage of him and how he's not received all of the money that he should have from his computer game. But um, that's, that's neither here nor there. What I'd like you to understand is that through the skills that we've kind of introduced ourselves to this week, if you've got an idea of a game, if you work hard to develop your technical skills like we looked at in the first two weeks uh, you can do this this is something that you are able to achieve uh, this game has sold out millions around the world it's a brilliant game um, it's an indie game uh, because uh, Tom Happ is an independent developer and he's done so so well so just to give you a real life uh, success story and true story about somebody that's gone through these skills of developing uh, computer games came up with branding, came up with packaging, came up with some campaign, sold it online and it's done brilliantly. So uh, just a kind of real life story, just to kind of kick us off for today, guys. OK, so what are we actually going to be looking at today? Uh, well, today, guys, we're going to be looking at specifically uh, because we've already looked at brand identity. We've kind of discussed carbon footprint and the considerations needed when designing environmentally friendly packaging. Today, we're going to be looking at audience and purpose when designing a social media campaign, okay, and how we can create a campaign uh, for a specific platform. Uh, so what does that mean? Um, just coming back to what we started with at the beginning, guys, okay, our challenge, and I introduced you to this on Wednesday and Monday, 
uh, was to follow the success of Football Manager's 2020 environmentally friendly packaging, Sega would like you to design a social media campaign that raises the awareness of how packaging can be designed to be more planet friendly based around the limited edition packaging you designed for their new game, Planet Simulator. And of course, guys, if you've gone for a different computer game of your own design, that's absolutely fine. It doesn't take away from the fact that what we are doing today is lo looking at how we can promote our limited edition packaging, uh, which is environmentally friendly, both recycled and recyclable materials, uh, and how we can get the, the word out there and make that game a success make sure that people hear about it and buy it now because what we've done so far guys is we've made some branding and we've made some packaging okay this should show uh sega has reduced the carbon footprint of its packaging for planet simulator or your game uh with a view of encouraging other companies to use more eco-friendly packaging and raising general awareness about climate change issues by highlighting the things that we can do in our everyday lives, okay? So what we're gonna do today, guys, is looking at creating this social media campaign. We're gonna try to get exposure and sell our computer games that we've designed, but also what we're gonna need to do is kind of promote these environmental points of view so that people can start making small changes in their daily lives and hopefully we can treat our planet with more kindness, okay? Uh, so before we go on, what is a social media campaign? Well, here we're saying it's a coordinated marketing of a product or business or service across multiple social media platforms. Um, so what does that mean? Why would we use social media? Well, there's lots and lots of different reasons for using social media. But fundamentally, one of the most amazing things about it is that it's free. You at home can create a social media campaign for a product that you've come up with or game or anything else, and you can start working on making sure that the word about that particular product, business, or service reaches people, and you can do that for free. And this is one of the truly powerful things about the internet, guys, is that it puts so much power into uh, an individual to be able to achieve their goals. Uh, we do not need expensive advertising costs for television uh, advertising or anything like that. We're not printing off flyers into magazines or billboards. Uh, we are using social media as a means to spread the word about our social media campaigns, guys, and that can be done for free. OK, and that's how powerful this can be. Um, so what we're going to look at to begin with, guys, is I've got some kind of worksheets. But what I'd like to do first is kind of start setting uh, the kind of scene of what types of things we want to go for with our particular social media campaign. Now, what I'd like to do to begin with is just kind of recap of where we got to with uh, our Planet Simulator designs uh, so that we know kind of what direction we want to take with our social media campaign today. So just having a quick look back at what we've achieved so far, uh, we did start on, on Monday by coming up with some themes and ideas for Planet Simulator. Uh, and you guys might have different themes and ideas or even a different computer game altogether, but you should have themes and ideas. Uh, we then came up with some of the ideas on branding OK, and we came up with perhaps a color scheme. Uh, maybe we came up with a tagline and we should have hopefully came up with some kind of uh, some kind of logo or icon that we want to use in our further designs by using an iterative process of design and uh, development. Uh, after that, we should then on Wednesday session have hopefully uh, gone ahead and produced some kind of computer game uh, cover. For, for our game. And again, what we're looking at here is uh, environmentally friendly cover made out of uh, recyclable materials that can all be recycled and also looking at using different types of ink uh, coming from plants that aren't environmentally damaging, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So hopefully we should have came up with the general idea of what we want our game cover to look like. And the first thing that people see when they think about purchasing this off of a shelf uh, so today, guys, what we're going to consider now going forwards is, is, you know, what are our goals if we're going to create a social media campaign and how are we going to move forwards? Now, as much as generally we all love to just dive straight into a project and get started, OK, and we want to go on to Twitter, we want to go on to Instagram, Facebook, uh, maybe even go on to TikTok, and we want to create some form of profile or page which we title with our game name and crack on from that point. Now, as much as we'd all love to just jump in head first, we can 
not underestimate the importance of planning these things out, taking it slowly at the start, so we give ourselves a really strong foundation to continue with, okay? Now, what I'd like to do with you guys today is start looking at the different considerations that we need to make with regards to planning our social media campaigns. Uh, and then we can start actually coming up with something more cohesive, more useful, more powerful that we can do across lots of different platforms in order to get the word out there as much as possible. And what we're going to do today, as well as, as well as plan our social media campaigns, we're going to learn a little bit about why different uh, platforms might be used for different types of people or for different types of communication as well. OK, so really, really, really important lesson today, guys, on if you did want to use social media as a means to communicate anything that you've done. Uh, this is perhaps the most effective way that you can go about at least beginning uh, that type of a campaign. OK, so where do we begin? Well, fundamentally, guys, we have a question that we need to answer. OK, or at least we've got something that's specific that we need to do. And we need to set our social media uh, goals and objectives. OK, so that's what I'm going to put here. Let's just bring this down a bit. Our goals. and objectives. Okay, what are our goals and objectives? Now, before I continue, guys, I'm sorry, I forgot to mention, but I hope you've got it by now anyway. Uh, make sure that you've got at a minimum uh, a piece of paper that you can write on today, a pen or a pencil. I don't mind which one you prefer to write with. Um, just make sure as a minimum, you've got those things because we're gonna need them going forwards today. It doesn't hurt to have a ruler. Uh, also, I've brought my trusty colouring pens with me as well so that I can add some colour to some of my designs that I do in a little while. I'm going to give you just a minute, guys, just to run away and grab that stuff. If you're not using uh, kind of real life things, instead you're doing this virtually, uh, use Paint or another piece of software, perhaps like Word, uh, Word documentation software, um, or even perhaps a presentation software like PowerPoint or Keynote, uh, because you'll be able to get all of your ideas down in any of those different platforms, okay? But fundamentally, if you've not got access to those, piece of paper, pens. I'll give you a minute just to go away and get those, get those now. Right. So Goals and objectives. Well, fundamentally, guys, we've been given two goals by Sega with regards to our game of Planet Simulator or any game that you guys have decided to develop. OK, now, the first and most fundamentally important goal for any business is to sell lots of Planet Simulator. OK, that is the fundamental objective of any business, which is to sell lots, make lots of money. OK, we do so so that we can increase the size of our business to go and do great things later on. We do so to pay our staff uh, that we look after and look after our business for us. OK, we need to sell lots and lots and lots of anything that we manufacture and produce uh, because we want to make lots of money. And there's nothing wrong with that. That is the objective of our business. But what else can we do as one of our goals and objectives, as well as selling lots of our particular computer game? What's the other thing that we've been asked to do by Sega? Because it's not all about making money. Well, we've been asked to promote our limited edition packaging. Okay. We've been asked to promote our limited edition packaging uh, which is, as we all know before, since before, environmentally friendly packaging. We've been asked to promote the limited edition packaging. So also this links in with selling lots of Planet Simulator because this is one of our unique selling points or points of difference. Um, finally, if we're talking about selling our product, selling our product, product because it has a purpose, well then finally, what was our purpose that we set out at the beginning of this? Uh, this was to be promote uh, being environmentally friendly. Uh, and there's kind of two sets of people that you want to promote being environmentally friendly to. There's your users or customers. 
Okay, which Sega's asked us obviously to promote too, so people can make small changes in their lives. But also, guys, and perhaps the bigger target is uh, other businesses. Or organizations. Yeah. This is fundamental. If we can reach the top end and get other companies to start putting things in place to be more environmentally friendly, we can start making a real change to the way that this planet does things. Fundamentally, guys, it doesn't matter how much recycling we do as individuals, the amount of plastic that these companies are producing is what's fun fundamentally going to impact climate change. And therefore, if we can promote being environmentally friendly to other businesses and organizations, maybe we can make a real change and a real impact in this world of, uh, of making the world a slightly cleaner, slightly better place. OK, so so far, guys, all we've done, which gives us a really clear picture now going forwards of what we'd like to achieve. We have got a very, very simple short list of goals and objectives from our social media campaign. OK, we want to sell lots of Planet Simulator, promote a limited edition packaging as part of that, and then promote being environmentally friendly, both to our customers, but also perhaps more importantly, to other businesses and organizations. Now, there's lots of objectives there, actually. And the way in which you might reach or or solve or achieve each of those objectives might be slightly different the way uh, the way you go about doing so. OK, um, which means uh, we now need to think about developing a content strategy. OK, now, what is a content strategy or what is our content strategy? Um, well, our content strategy is talking about the types of content we want to publish or post to each social uh, network. Uh, who is the target audience for each of those things and how often will we post content? And how often will we promote it? OK, so coming back to our piece of work. OK, and back onto your piece of work as well, please, guys. I'd like us just to write down our content. Strategy. OK, so our content strategy, what is that going to look like? What types of actual communications or things or resources or videos or pictures are we going to produce and who are we going to send them to? Because once you've created your social media platforms, we need to achieve these objectives. Now, typically, as users of social media, we might just talk about what dinner we've had that day, something that we're looking forward to, someone's birthday we want to wish a happy birthday to, or, or just take selfies and post them up all the time in different outfits in front of the mirror. Now, that's not something that I do, guys, but it's something that I see a lot. Now, what types of content can we produce for our computer game that's actually going to be of value to our branding and to our customers or to other businesses? What actual things are we going to say or give that are going to be of some type of value? So fundamentally, guys, we can break down these three things. Uh, again, we can promote limited edition packaging. Because our limited edition packaging is something that makes us different to other people. It's something that people will get hold of and be interested in and also want to write about as well. One of the uh, fantastic elements of social media is that once we start talking about our limited edition packaging, which is completely made from recyclable materials and recycled materials, um, is that there's going to be journalists that have audiences that are interested in being more environmental and they are going to want to get hold of this idea and run their own uh, article about that particular point of view, which means that your word is then starting to spread and propagate uh, through the Internet and through other people's voices, which is what social media is all about. Um, what else do we want to specifically produce in terms of content? Well, for our users and customers, we perhaps want to make tips on being more environmentally friendly and they could be uh, videos or photos I think videos would be best though 
uh, which are very, very quick and simple, easy things that people can do to be more environmentally friendly. And I think getting a nice, cool idea of how to do so would be something that I'd be interested in watching for sure. Uh, you know, just something that doesn't take long, isn't particularly preachy and just says you can do this quick thing to help make the world a better place. So I'd be quite happy to get that type of tip. Uh, and then finally, guys, looking at our final objective, which is to other businesses and organisations, we can start promoting the benefits of uh, our new packaging from a business perspective. Uh, from the industry of environmentalism. America often talks about this plan that they have in place in order to make uh, turn America around in the next seven years into an entirely green economy. Uh, I'm not sure on the kind of go ahead of that particular plan because there's lots of vested interests. Um, but um, with regards to that particular plan, uh, they're talking about having this environmentalist industry where through renewable energy sources, through recycling, through producing sustainable farming and materials, uh, that would actually create lots and lots and lots and lots of jobs that actually would help boost the American economy long term. Wouldn't cost them money to make the world a better place. They could actually profit from making the world a better place. So a really, really exciting area there. Uh, on the different industries within environmentalism that you might want to talk uh, to big businesses about, the opportunities that they have, the benefits of their packaging, uh, the operations, or sometimes referred to as the old-fashioned word logistics of that particular development of new packaging, okay? So what I'm going to do, guys, is kind of stop there because I want us to get into the meat of today. I just wanted to say that we need to start every single different content uh, and every social media strategy must start with our goals and must start with a kind of general content strategy. OK, we want to be able to produce these types of content and and distribute those to the right types of people. But how are we going to promote? The benefits of new packaging, the industry of environmentalism, uh, operations and logistics benefits to big businesses at the same time as promoting tips on being more environmentally friendly to your everyday people or customers and promote our game and limited edition packaging. How are we gonna do all of those things? Well, what we need to consider guys, before we move on is where is the most effective or, or the best place to communicate with each of those different types of people because leaders of big business don't operate on the same kind of TikTok and Instagram level as what perhaps uh, social media influencers and people like that do, okay? So where might we hope to actually communicate with these different groups of people? Well, what I've got is a document published by Hootsuite and this document, uh, it's called Getting Started on your, here we go, the all-in-one social media strategy workbook, okay? Uh, the tools, networks, and tactics you need to succeed. So Hootsuite is a piece of software that enables us to manage lots of different types of media profile at the same time, social media profile. And what they've produced, guys, is a ebook on the social media strategy, okay? And how we can go about making sure that if we're using social media, we can maximize the amount of influence that we make with it, okay? So what Hootsuite have discussed is that there's four key strategy considerations. We need to understand who our customer is, okay? And we need to be able to uh, know where to find them online. So for example, my audience is comprised of women aged 25 to 35. So the primary schools networks I should fo focus on, at least initially, are Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, and Instagram, for example. Okay, This person who's got a particular uh, campaign to share already knows exactly who their audience is, who they want to hear their campaign, and uh, where they'd like that to be promoted. So what we're going to do, guys, is just break each of these four things down before we go... any further forward. We've got two target audience. We've got our customer 
and we've got businesses. So our customer, we knew from last time in our um, specification that Sega had given us that our customer was uh, children from seven up uh, interested in simulation, obviously computer games, and perhaps uh, the environment. Although I have to be honest, uh, I'm not particularly interested in the environment. However, if I was to see a really interesting simulation game that looked really cool, I still might purchase it, even though I'm not specifically interested in the environment. Uh, the same way that somebody that's really interested in the environment might not be into computer games particularly, but if they see this game, they think, actually, I'd be interested in playing that. And therefore, any of these interests are important, guys. They might be different, they might be joined, but they're still really primarily important interests for us. Now, when talking about children seven and over, we're not really talking about people that at least uh, kind of as far as regulations are concerned should be using social media to a great extent. But uh, anyone from 13 over can be using social media and their own social media platforms. And therefore, we still capture a large group of children there. Um, so where would you say, as somebody that fits within this category, perhaps uh, interested in computer games at your age, where would you say... Uh, would be the best social media platforms to reach you on? Which social media, social media platforms are you using that we could advertise through? Well, I would suggest that for people of your age, uh, we could do a little bit of research on that to have a, have a look at uh, where young people are. So what we've got here, guys, is a breakdown of popular social media networks. We've got Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, Google+, Pinterest, Instagram, YouTube, and Foursquare. I've never heard of before. Um, we're missing some, aren't we? We're missing TikTok. We're missing uh, perhaps Snapchat. Uh, there'll be others that we're missing as well. But just focusing on these ones primarily, you know more about the other two than I do. Um, is Facebook a good place to look at? Well, it's got 1.28 billion users, so approximately a fifth of the people on the planet are on there. However, 48% of uh, users are aged 18 to 34. 31% are aged 35 to 54. So actually a very small number of people using Facebook are actually perhaps in your age range. So is that the right place to look? Um, let's have a quick look. Where might we expect to see younger people? Uh, well, Instagram, okay. 90% of users are under 35 years old. 90% of their users are under 35. So perhaps Instagram is somewhere that we might want to aim for i'm going to come out off the wing straight away and say that snapchat but most certainly tiktok you guys are going to laugh when you see how i've spelled that I've, I've, i don't know how to spell tiktok um i'm going to say certainly those different platforms are going to have the most number of young people that we're interested in reaching okay i am however going to include a bit of an oddball here and i'm going to include facebook why why might I include Facebook for this user group of customers? Well, we're saying that 65% of these are females and 48% of the users are aged between 18 and 34. I wonder of those 65% of females aged between 18 and 34, how many of those users are mums? Because mums with children fundamentally are going to be customers. They won't be the consumers of our game. Our consumers will be our player base, which we're aiming at children. But mums are going to be the customers. They're going to be going out and buying these, hopefully, for their children. So fundamentally, Facebook might be a good place to aim at these kids' parents instead of these kids directly. OK. Uh, and there's lovely, lovely different filters that you could use in advertising to make sure that you're aiming your game at people that you know are interested in the environment, are interested in social issues, okay? Now, in order to keep this concise, let's just aim at those three different areas for our customers, but businesses, where can we aim at businesses? 
Well, actually, I know that one of the fantastic places to aim at different businesses that produce computer games or manufacture any type of software or films. Anyone that could use this type of case, really. Uh, these different manufacturers or producers are definitely using LinkedIn, okay, because they are businesses. And for anyone that's not been on LinkedIn, it's basically the boring version of Facebook for old people uh, that are just working in business fundamentally. Uh, but you can find jobs through LinkedIn, young professionals and older professionals use it quite a lot. You see that 60% of our users are aged between 25 and 54. Um, this is geared towards building professional connections and to aid career development. Okay, I've not been on there in a long time since I've become a teacher. I've, I've not had to use that ecosystem, but uh, I used to. And LinkedIn can be a fantastic place to reach businesses, okay? Especially if you're talking about reducing cost of production, increasing environmentally friendly, which for lots of businesses reduces the amount of tax they have to pay, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and the last place I'd recommend that we try to get through to different businesses on, again, is Twitter. Uh, because lots of businesses take an active interest on Twitter. Uh, lots and lots of users. And also we'll find that there's lots and lots of ways in that you can communicate with people through Twitter, lots of conversations and uh, different um, journalists uh, use Twitter a lot as well in order to kind of find stories or, or share stories as well. So I think as far as target audience is concerned, we can stop there. OK, um, do we need to go into any more kind of detail at this point, guys? Let's have a quick look. Do we need a mission statement? I hope it would be nice to have, but we haven't got time for that today. So I'm going to move forwards with that. Have we set a goal? Actually, we've got goals and objectives. We've already done that. And have we developed a content strategy for each profile? Kind of, yeah. We've said the types of things we'd like to produce for different uh, groups of people. So we can probably uh, end that there. So what have we done so far, guys? We're now kind of ready to start designing what some of our different profiles or actual content uh, uploads might look like, okay? Uh, we've got our goals and objectives that we've already kind of started and, and uh, kind of ironed out to a certain extent, all right? Uh, we've got our content strategy, which kind of specifies the types of content we're going to produce for each of these different user bases. And then we've actually broken our target audience into two very specific groups. We've got our customers or our consumers, uh, which are children uh, from 10, uh, sorry, from uh, seven. Uh, and then we've got our businesses as well. OK, so we're going to be talking about how to make the world a better place to other businesses and industry leaders as well. Uh, so what's next for us, guys? Uh, where do we have to go from here? Um, well, the next step for us, really, have, now that we've looked at uh, setting the media goals and developed a content strategy, is talking specifically about why we've chosen each platform. OK, which we can do now. Uh, what I'm going to do is just list each of those platforms and just write a sim simple sentence on uh, three of the platforms that I'm going to aim at or, or look towards uh, marketing on. And again, guys, although I've listed five, I've said Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, LinkedIn and Twitter. I'm only going to pick three and just write a sentence for each to explain why I've picked that particular social network. OK, now, if this helps, guys, whilst I do this. Uh, down on my paper so you guys can kind of see on the mini screen what I'm doing down here. Um, what I'm going to do is actually share back that Hootsuite page uh, so that you guys can kind of get some uh, information back on that Hootsuite page of the types of uh, things or benefits that each of those social media sites has going for it. OK. So let's do that. I've got a list of some of the networks. Again, YouTube, fantastic channel. One billion users on YouTube. Right. Actually, I've changed my mind. I'm going to use YouTube as well. I'm putting YouTube on my customer because I like YouTube. Obviously, I like YouTube, guys. I'm between 18 and 34 years old. I'm the predominant user base. But I know you guys use it as well. So I'm going to mute three different social media platforms, a sentence for each of why that is the best platform for you to convey your content to that particular target group.
Okay, guys, so you've just had a few minutes just to write down three different social media uh, platforms or sites. And, you know, what is your justification for each of those different platforms or sites? I'm just going to quickly run you through the three that I've come up with uh, so that you perhaps can compare that against your own. Okay. Now, I've said Instagram, uh, YouTube, and LinkedIn. Uh, what's nice about the three that I've chosen actually is that I use Instagram and YouTube quite a lot anyway, so I know a bit about how they work. Uh, LinkedIn, I don't really use anymore, but I do understand what it's for and how I can reach big businesses through that. So, uh, Instagram, I've just noted that 90% of users are under 35, uh, which means you've got a relatively young audience. Um, quick images and videos to generate quick, snappy interest. Uh, you can do links to different products through their advertising space. But also, there's a lovely hashtag system uh, where you can easily expose your game onto lots of different threads or, or different kind of uh, hashtags, essentially, which people follow and are interested in. Okay, So, for example, uh, for my game, I might want to promote both environmentalism, green, uh, sustainability, etc., in order to hit that market. They're interested in those things. Uh, but I could also start tagging, you know, simulation, game, switch, uh, PlayStation, Xbox, Steam, etc., to show that this is a computer game that I've created. I can reach those two different groups of people that I was saying at the beginning by effectively using the, the tags well, okay? Uh, YouTube, why might I want to use YouTube? Well, I can put full length trailers of my game. I can do long discussion videos where I can do something that's much, much greater in length to what you can normally include on Instagram. Uh, I can then start using all of these videos that I've generated and stick them onto my other social media campaigns as well. So for example, LinkedIn, any video that I upload onto YouTube, I can include onto LinkedIn. Um, also guys, it's got 1 billion users. Uh, I'm sure that even if your game is rubbish, out of a billion people, no matter how many people see it, I'm sure you'll find one person interested in buying it at least. So having that large user base is hugely, hugely useful guys, because fundamentally it's a numbers game. And finally, guys, I've said LinkedIn again. For me, it's so important that I'm using LinkedIn because I can reach big businesses to discuss changes in operations management and the benefits of being more green in your industry. OK, because there are lots and lots of different leaders of industry out there which frequently read about all these different ways of doing things and how they can impact their own businesses for the better. OK, so now what I've got, guys, is a very clear idea of what I want to include on my Instagram, on my YouTube and on my LinkedIn. OK, so where do we go from here? Um, again, we've done lots and lots of planning, guys, but I hope that what you're getting from this is a really, really clear idea of the types of things that we're going to uh, hopefully go on to design for our social media campaigns. There's so many jobs in the industry for this type of work in every single, every single different uh, facet of business. So much of it is done poorly. Uh, but some of it is done really, really, really well. Uh, I think those companies that really stand out has been excellent at their social media for me. Uh, I know one of them recently has been Lego. The amount of uh, things that Lego do and the amount of different places they cross over into to expose their brand and their toys is amazing. Uh, I recently started looking at on the 1st of October, Lego uh, produced some boxes with Ikea uh, that you can actually build onto and they look lovely and I'm going to buy some from my little boy's room. He's only two, but I'm sure that eventually he'll be playing Lego and so will I. So Lego, for example, uses social media, listens to its audience, but uses all these different channels to just really reach so many different people. Uh, I think one of the best things Lego ever did was produce the Lego movie, which is brilliant. Also, what a fantastic piece of advertising, an hour and a half of advertising Lego in a great movie that's really funny. Uh, anyway, moving on. So what I'd like us to do next, guys, is just have a quick look at some of the frequency of communications across these different networks. OK, and again, I've only got the same networks that I had before. Uh, but what I'd like to do is just talk about the focus and frequency or tips for each of those different social network accounts. OK, uh, if you've chose any of those uh, six that are on your screen, you can get some info from this. But basically, the way that I'm going to look at this is now that I know that I'm using Instagram, I know that it's got rich imagery, uh, one to two uh, Insta updates or, or I can't remember what the word is, but posts uh, per day. Uh, and there's no real fatigue with posting, but ensure consistency week after week. So I'm just going to make a note of my campaign here, guys. I'm just going to say one to two per day. 
and keep it consistent. Okay, you always keep your communications consistent because fundamentally on your page, you have an entire kind of thumbnail board and it would be nice to be able to pick up the same kind of vibe or branding from that particular board if you were to look at that on Instagram. Uh, YouTube, it's not got any further details for us on YouTube, but that's fine. Uh, it has got further details for us on LinkedIn. I wish to say this is formal and technical content, so I need to keep it formal and technical. People like tips in business, but they like them being called psychology rather than just general pub chat. Uh, they like looking at different ways you can increase operations management, but they don't like you just looking at that at the low level and telling people to work harder. It always has to be very technical in LinkedIn, very formal. Uh, and then one, uh, two to five per week. That's important. Two to five per week. Yeah, two to five per week. And LinkedIn posts get more traction during the work week. Yeah, people tend to use LinkedIn on a weekday. So I'm just going to write weekday. Don't, no need to do this stuff on the weekend necessarily. Okay. Uh, yeah, great. So I've not got any further uh, tips for my uh, uh, YouTube campaign, but that's fine. I'm essentially using it as a platform to generate this content and to stick it onto my other social media sites anyway. So that's not a big deal for me. Okay. But what I've got is a really lovely, clear idea in my mind now. These are the people that I want to reach. These are the things I want to say. And these are the different uh, social media platforms I'd like to use in order to convey that messaging. Okay. Now, where do we go from here? Um, what I'd like us to do now, kind of for the next 10 minutes, is just to actually start thinking about what these particular communications are actually going to look like. OK, uh, what will a post that I produce on Instagram look like? Uh, because I want to design that ahead of time before I then go and produce it. OK, uh, and what I'd like us to do now, guys. OK, we're going to start on a new sheet of paper, but we're still going to use the uh, plan and the campaign plan that we've created. Uh, I'm going to show you my my uh, paper. We're just going to create some sketches or ideas of what our different social media campaigns are going to look like. Okay. So what I'm going to do, guys, is just label. Uh, these are what my Instagram posts might look like. Okay. And actually, on this other side, I might as well include them together. I'm just going to put LinkedIn on this side as well. Okay. So these are fundamentally my two different. Uh, target audiences aren't they my customers and other businesses so on Instagram how does that work what does that typically look like on Instagram well for anyone that's got Instagram you guys can quickly uh, shoot off and have a quick look at what that might look like but fundamentally guys an Instagram post is very quite simple uh, it's like one of those old Polaroid pictures that you can uh, you see people printing off and sticking onto things and again, I'm just going to create a space for this. I'm going to create a rectangle for this. Okay, uh, it's going to have our it's going to have our kind of kind of draw a little logo up there. It's going to have our username and our profile picture up there. It's then going to have our main image area. Like this. Again, if you want to use pencil, that's absolutely fine, guys. And then it's going to have the different icons underneath so people can favor it. Uh, people can send it to others and message it or comment on it. Yeah, sometimes you have the dots underneath to show there's multiple screens. And obviously there's the bookmark so that people can kind of tag that or save that onto their own area yeah there will normally be options of who's liked it uh but also guys what's really important about these things is that we can actually start adding uh, tags to these things so we'll put some text i'm just going to write text and then we've got what t people typically do is just list their tags going down like that okay so what i'm going to do actually guys is just consider this a wireframe now, what's a wireframe? Uh, this isn't, I'm not going to try and play the artist. Uh, you guys 
remember from before I said I'm not an artist I'm not the best drawer in the world I'm not bad but I'm not good either um and I'm not going to pretend to be I'm the social media manager I'm planning this campaign I need the ideas other people that work with me or for me could go away and produce all of this beautiful content but I'm just coming up with the ideas so what might I want my Instagram post to look like well uh one of these things I'm essentially very simple I'm just going to simply tweet the fact that my game exists so uh for example in here i might have a uh, image of the game packaging yeah as my idea number one i can have an image of the game packaging uh, what might i include as a hashtag to that well i said before environment Green. Healthy planet. Yeah. What else do I need? I need switch. PlayStation. Simulator, etc. Guys, what I've done is created the first kind of post to my instagram account uh that i might want to put up but again i've not produced any content yet i've just said what i want that content to be well let's do it again uh again you can draw this out again if you'd like guys and actually plan it out physically so you know what this uh, particular post would look like but all i'm going to do is write uh <laughs> i've done that tiny i can just write number two to say what another one would look like oops Uh, this time I'm not going to give an image of the packaging. I'm going to give a short video of my gameplay. Let's play with a P, not a B. Gameplay. So a video of my gameplay. Uh, so what's that going to look like, guys? Uh, well, so the short clip. On the consequences... of decisions in game. So you could show your audience uh, potentially what might happen if you decide to invest heavily in the in the diesel and petrol industries, uh, or what might happen if you invest in the uh, solar power and wind power, or even better, uh, uh, tidal power industries, and see what the difference might look like with regards to your consequences in game as a way to hook them, show that their choices mean something. So. What might our tags be this time? It might be, again, simulation. Maybe just gameplay. Maybe... Do you know what I've not even thought about, guys, is that this game might even be able to work on iPhone or iOS or Android. I'll consider that fully. If it's going to work on Switch, it most likely would work on most modern modern tablets or phones simulation gameplay choices again coming back to some of that environmentalism stuff you might just want to write green or save the planet again you can do research into you know what are the popular Hashtags. Maybe you want to look into what the most popular hashtags are before you start putting hashtags down so that you know you're generating the most reach with each of your ideas. Now, we've said that in our Instagram, we only have to do between one and two posts per day. So actually, I've already planned my first day of my campaign there. And I might want to come up through the iterative design process, guys, with, I don't know, 24 different ideas. Um, so that I've got lots and lots of content that I can produce for a, a, a number of uh, weeks, perhaps. Um, coming over to LinkedIn, which is going to look ever so slightly differently. And what I'm going to do very quickly, guys, is just sign into LinkedIn because it's been so long uh, since I've used it. I've actually forgotten what it looks like uh, with regards to actual posts and stuff like that. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to struggle here to sign in. I can't remember any of my details. Anyway, that's that. 
Um, what we're going to go for, I, th I think pr they pretty much all look exactly the same anyway. Uh, let's say that we're going to start our LinkedIn post with, again, another rectangle, although typically uh, there's not going to be a kind of box for this in LinkedIn, but what we're looking at is a mobile kind of platform, although lots of people do engage with LinkedIn using desktop computers. There'll be this kind of planet simulator icon down here. Again, we want our username. Do we want that to be planet simulator or Do we want our username to be Michael Digital Schoolhouse? Do we want this to be more personal? Do we want to actually share who we are as an individual as opposed to being a kind of nameless brand or company? I think most likely you'd have more success to an extent on making it a little bit more personal, guys, because LinkedIn isn't about being communicated to from big companies. It's more about linking with actual other professionals in your kind of uh, industry. Uh, and seeing how you can link with other people in that way instead. So I'm actually going to go for a more personal approach and include my name uh, in my particular username there, okay? But again, that's a decision for you to think about and, and make yourselves. Uh, we'll then have some form of banner or image. Again, I'm not going to draw it, guys, because there's no need. I'm not an artist. But this time round... What type of imagery might I include? Because often in LinkedIn, people are happy to see, I'm sure there's a title above that actually. Title of the content. Yeah. And then you're gonna have uh, perhaps a little description there as well. Again, I'm making this up guys. It's been a long time since I've had to go on to LinkedIn for anything career wise. Although I've got lots of jobs through there guys. I'd recommend it if you're looking to start in the industry. Um, so what types of ideas am I coming up here for LinkedIn? Well, actually, uh, people tend to like, and this always works online, 10 tips to convert your business to a green one. And maybe you have then a, a link which then goes somewhere, which then goes to an actual article that you've written, perhaps on a blog or on your website for your for your uh, game to say, you know, 10 tips that professionals can do to convert their businesses into a more green or efficient one. Okay, maybe that's idea number one. Uh, I, and again, this only has to be one per day. What about two? Uh, the motivational impact of an environmental workplace on your staff. Again, why would I want to communicate something like that? Well, because guys, I'm speaking to other professionals that want to get the most out of their businesses. If I'm writing an article about the impact that an environmental workplace has on their staff, makes them work harder, makes them perform more, makes them generate more profit for their businesses, this can become a viable solution for them and their business. Again, I'm just completely coming up with ideas here, guys, but it's through these stages that we come up with something cohesive that makes sense when we communicate that to the outside world. Okay, now finally, guys, I just want to go on to uh, kind of... Uh, finish off what we've done today and kind of go through our objectives and hopefully uh, looking at this week's workshop on uh, creating an eco uh, campaign for our computer game that we've either designed ourselves or for Planet Simulator. I hope that we've all had the opportunity this week to look at brand identity, 
carbon footprint, considerations needed when designing environmentally friendly packaging, but also today looked at the audience and purpose when designing social media campaigns, how to create social media campaign for a specific platform, okay? Uh, the last thing I wanna share that's really important and I'd highly recommend that you guys have a quick look at it is uh, this actual uh, piece of software called Hootsuite, okay? Now Hootsuite is fantastic. Um, here's the little icon, but yeah, it's called Hootsuite. And uh, they should have their branded stuff here. Here we go. Hootsuite is, an, is a place where you can manage your entire social media uh, platforms across multiple platforms. You can schedule different posts. Uh, you can kind of manage all your messaging and stuff like that. You can analyze when you've released posts and when they've been most po popular during the day. So, for example, you know, on LinkedIn, we want to be aiming for work days, perhaps not weekends. But there are plenty of people that check their phone on LinkedIn on the weekends. Um, and that's the type of thing that Hootsuite can offer you as a tool, as a social media campaign manager, uh, to help you keep everything in one place and manageable, okay, and doable. So, guys, that's it from me. What have we done so far? We've looked at generating some of the skills that might be required as programmers or game designers in the industries for the first two weeks. And then this week, we've looked at some of the skills that are needed in order to help support those businesses and industries with some of the other things involved in the gaming industry, like coming up with the branding, the packaging, and some of the marketing as well. Uh, hopefully, uh, like, what was his name? Thomas, Thomas Hibbs? I can't remember. But the man who came up with the game Axiom Verge, you've got everything that you need now to continue to develop skills and go ahead and turn yourselves into millionaires because he did everything on his own. And that can be done in today's world of using computers as a means for a tool. OK, now that's it from me and Digital Schoolhouse. I hope that you've enjoyed the nine sessions that we've had uh, and I hope to see you guys again in the near future. Uh, do continue playing computer games. Do continue focusing in your computing lessons at school so that you're gaining the skills to make these games, not just play these games. Um, and if you're not specifically interested in computer games, I hope that what you've taken from uh, this, this uh, scheme of work that we've done over the past three weeks is that these skills can be applied to any area of industry. The problem solving that we've done in the first two weeks apply everywhere. And also this social media campaigns design, production, all of those things exist in a real workplace that's waiting for young people like you to gain these skills and come and work for these big businesses, okay? So thank you so much for going through uh, this course with me. Um, I'd like